So now I've got the belt dangling down in there. And um, a really handy tool I've found is uh, a chopstick, uh, bamboo, make sure it's a bamboo chopstick with an alligator clip crimped to the end. Okay. The bamboo chopstick is actually a high voltage resistor uh, that will allow you to bleed charge away from charged objects through your body uh, b without getting a, a big shock. Uh, okay. And then the uh, alligator clip is useful for holding things into the field and for uh, doing what I'm about to do, which is to pull the belt down and slip it over the bottom roller. Like that. Let's see if there's... This is the tricky part because when it slips off the alligator clip, everything goes flying out the other end. So I've taken the alligator clip and used it as a hook and I've slipped the belt over the bottom roller and then I'm going to make sure that the bottom brush is uh, properly positioned just above that belt but not in contact with it. Okay, So, top roller's on. Uh, like that. And now I'm going to have to move over just a little bit because I don't have the vertical room there to put the top capacity on. So we'll move this over here to there. And then the top capacity is uh, two more of those Baby Moon hubcaps that I've taped together. And I've got a matching hole and put a piece of that uh, PVC in there um, so that it's a slip fit onto the top of the unit. And it just goes right on there like that. And uh, that's, that's the completed Vandy Graph, uh, third generation, okay? So we'll set that up right there. And here is the, there's the battery and the power cord. So we'll plug in the power cord back there, put the battery away. And then I'm gonna use one of these uh, as something to spark to one of these other machines, so we'll set that up right here. Okay. Now this is a little piece of uh, ball chain uh, uh, that I've, I've uh, used uh, heat shrink to put two tiny little magnets on either end of the ball chain, so I can connect the base of that hubcap to another magnet that I've secreted inside this uh, stainless steel sphere here. So the ball chain now acts as a connection from the ground to that sphere. And we should be ready to go. So we'll set that up like that and flip the switch. Oh, I also put a blue LED in the base there. And uh, you can hear it sparking. I'm going to move this a little closer there. Ooh, zap. Okay. So snap, snap. I, uh, I wired the switch so that I could reverse the direction of the belt. Let's go the other way on the belt. Ooh. Snap, snap. Okay. So let's see if we can see anything with the lights out. Yeah, there you go. Ow. We'll open up that gap a little bit. And there's some good sparks there. Now those sparks are uh, about 115 millimeters the way they are right there. So the machine's producing about 300, three, 250 to 300 kilovolts. It really is, uh, and uh, uh, one, 1,000, uh, about a spark every second at that voltage. Uh, I think I got some interference with the belt, so I'm going to switch the direction uh, of the motor right now. Woo! Every time it sparks, it gives me a little shock. Okay, now we're running the motor in the other direction. 
And since I have the combs placed pretty symmetrically, uh, it doesn't change the behavior. You still get the same uh, number of sparks. But it is possible if you decide on one particular direction of rotation of the belt, you can position the combs uh, so that uh, the machine generates a little bit more current and charges faster. Okay. Now I mentioned the field. Uh, I don't want to stick my hand up in there too too much. So what I'm going to do is uh, turn it off. Oof. Oof. Turn it off, and we'll turn the lights back on. And uh, we'll use the chopstick to discharge the system. Okay. Now it's down enough so that I can spark it to my hand. And then I'll get another spark when I touch the base. Okay, so the field shaping rings are actually very necessary. Watch what happens if I just take this top one and I move it down like that. Okay, so now we'll turn it on again. Sparks are very weak, right? It's still kind of trying to spark across that gap, but not really. I don't know if uh, the camera will pick up anything if I turn the blue light off, but we'll try it. So the blue light's off now, and uh, no, you can't see it. But what's happening is the corona actually is uh, spraying out down the, uh, uh, around the, the base where that field shaping ring was before and dissipating the charge so that it doesn't build up enough to genuinely spark across that gap, okay? And so what I'll do is uh, turn the machine off again. Oops! <laughs> that was shocking. And it does have some charge on it, so we'll bleed that off. And the spark to my knuckle and spark down here, okay? Now I'll just slide that field shaper back up, right up into there. And I'll position these back to where I know they should be, about like that. Okay. And now we'll turn her on again. And now you can hear it snapping. And if I turn the light off, you should be able to see the spark jumping across that gap very easily. Okay. So that proves to you, or it should anyway, that uh, these field shapers, listen to that thing go. Ooh, Nelly. Now every once in a while, nothing's changing, but every once in a while there will be a bright white snappy spark going across there. I've been hoping to capture one of those on the video, but I haven't seen one yet. Uh, it's those sparks that I think are most interesting in the system because I'm going to move the, open the gap a little bit. Oops, ouch. Let's see if we can get one of those big sparks. Well, I'm not seeing those big bright uh, sparks right now, but I want you to note that it is sparking across a gap there that's close to 15 seconds.